This is a decimal tense announcement. It has been recognised that in the past few videos there has been a huge gaping hole where banter normally would be. A cataclysmic vortex of space where normally our brethren, our colleague, our friend, our technical guru, Decimal Spence would fill. Please follow the link below, get your very own Where's Decimal Spence t-shirt and join in the nationwide search for our colleague, our friend Spence. The channel needs you. YouTube needs you. Just come home. That is all. Thank you. A little bit of banter between me and Spencer. He's meant to show up for these videos. Uh, we, he never does. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if you do want a t-shirt, you can you know, support one a little bit by going and buying one on the link below. Thanks very much if you do. If you don't want to, fair one. Today I'm going to be doing an eye cooler install on my 18T Lupo track car. It is a KO4 powered car. It runs 270 horse at about one and a half bar of boost. And this thing flies. It absolutely flies. But... With all that power and speed and downright fun on track, <laughs> it generates a lot of heat. Uh, and all that happens is the uh, standard oil cooler, this one, oh, it's full of coolant, um, it can quickly get saturated. So this standard oil cooler, it's a oil to water cooler. So the coolant's uh, circulated around the matrix and the oil drops down through it. Um, and it's pretty good on a road car, but you tend to find that it just simply can't shed the heat on truck. You, you know, the sustained high RPM, the high boost levels, all that heat in the oil, it just can't get rid of it. So then you need to start thinking about an external oil cooler. Now I've run external oil coolers on all of my 18T cars before and it's, it's pretty much an essential thing, like I say, especially if you go on truck. Uh, I'll stop blabbing on about it. This one's crap. Let's talk about the external oil cooler kit that I'm about to fit. This is a Mokul 13 row oil cooler kit that I got off Matt Lewis Racing on eBay. Um, he was pretty much the cheapest one, to be honest. And I bought stuff off him before, so I knew for a fact it was going to be good stuff. I would have loved to have went for a 16-row. Um, I got some advice off Nick Vaughan, so thanks very much, mate. He runs a 16-row, and let's face it, if you're into 18Ts and you're into track cars, then he's a man that needs to be listened to. Um, but sadly, I just can't fit a 16-row on the front of the Lupo. It was just that little bit too big. So I've went for a 13-row. Um, it comes with all the half inch BSB fittings, the uh, Mokul sandwich plate, now this is a thermostatic one, we'll talk about this in a second, but I'd recommend that you get the thermostatic one, and obviously the sealant washers and BSB fittings. Now I'm pretty limited with where I can fit the oil cooler on the car, because I've got a pretty big intercooler up front and that's low down, and then I've got the intercooler piping which is all two and a half inch, so I don't want to sacrifice any of that. And I don't particularly want to move it into cooler position because it sits behind the bumper really, really snug. Uh, so pretty much the only place that I've got to fit this oil cooler is here. Now this is exactly where the grill sits. So it's direct in airflow. So it'll be really good in the full matrix will be in the airflow. So I'm pretty confident that this 13 roll will do the job. Because um, for example, in my S3, in my Mark II, I had 13 row coolers but I didn't exactly have them in direct airflow um, and the, they still did the job uh, really well. So I think with this in direct airflow, it'll be really good. And obviously you can see it doesn't quite fit in here at the minute. So there is gonna have to be a bit of butchery to the front panel here. And I'm gonna have to maybe modify the uh, bonnet release a little bit, but I'll get it in though. So our first job is going to be butcher the slam panel <laughs> in the nicest way possible and get this oil cooler mounted. <sighs> Winter's upon me and there's a bit of a chill in the air so I've got the garage heater on as well. What's that? More of the cars to come up? Surely not. Right, I think that's a healthy amount of butchery. So let's, uh, let's 
Let's get the crash bar on that back on, see if I'll get this fitted. Right, that looks pretty good now. Time to see if the grill fits. I've took the VW badge out just for now, just to see. But. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know if you can see down the back of there, but there's loads of plastic I'll be able to remove there. And I should be able to make up the, I don't know, like 20 mil gap that is there. Let's have a go. Check that, you can't even tell. So that's the grill mounting really nice there. And right behind there, is the oil cooler. You see where I butchered the back of the grill here? Around the barge and around these fins. It's not actually that too bad to be honest. But that fits in lovely now. Right, so time to get the cooler mounted now. Um, I'm gonna use these brackets that came in the kit. Now every time I've fitted one of these in the past, I haven't used the Mogul brackets because oh, I, don't know, I think they're a bit flimsy to be honest. And I prefer like nicer, chunkier stuff. Well, I suppose if I'm going to make a video about fitting this kit, then it makes sense that I actually use the kit, you know. So if you do go and buy it yourself, then you'll know that you can do it yourself with this. Uh, now, seeing as it's a 13 row cooler, really it should be mounted at the top and the bottom. Um, so that there's no, like, movement on it. Because these are just aluminium, and they can fracture really easily. So, I mean, I've, I've already scraped the black paint off it. I mean, such a rough twat. But yeah, I'm going to use these brackets and I'm just going to have to make up some uh, simple brackets that go on the top of the cooler, then mount onto the slam panel here. And then I'll make some simple sort of Z brackets for the bottom where it mounts onto the aluminium plate here, which my intercooler rests on. And that'll be mounted on the top and the bottom on all four corners, so it should be solid. And uh, yeah, it should be easy enough. Anyway, let's do it. So no mechanical wizardry on this one, uh, just simple brackets using the actual bit of material that you get in the kit, um, mounting the cooler both at the top, where I've drilled it, uh, sorry, where I've cut through the slam panel, and then at the bottom, just simple brackets. This one, I could mount like this, but this one, this is where the pipe's going to come along here, so I couldn't mount it the same as that, so I've had to mount it slightly different, which leaves this space here for the pipes. And that's all just loosely bolted on, but you can see straight away that it's pretty solid like. Um, and obviously I'll, I'll dress these up, I'll make them look a little bit prettier. I might even paint these ones black, because by the time the grill's on here, you'll see these bits. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter, it's a track car, it's not a show car. Now these salmon splits are pretty cool, and they're made up by two chambers. There's a top chamber, and then there's a bottom. Now the top chamber is where the oil comes in uh, from the uh, oil pump. Uh, it fills up that top chamber and the oil has two places to go. First of all, out of the exit hole here, which goes straight to the oil cooler. It comes back into this little hole here, goes into the bottom chamber and goes straight into the filter, just as normal. It also allows oil to get down this back little passage here, uh, which lets it bypass the oil cooler. And basically all that happens is, that bypass is always open right up until the point where the oil temperature gets so high that the thermostat actually closes 
that little back passage. I, I need to stop saying back passage, don't I? <laughs> so the, that, uh, <laughs> that little thermostatically controlled back passage, um, that closes and basically all that does is it forces the oil to go through the cooler right up until the point where the oil cools down a little bit and then the thermostat opens again and the oil gets to go through and that's how it works and it basically just means that you don't overcool your oil simple as that it doesn't allow all of the oil through the cooler unless that thermostat has reached temperature and blocked off the back passage <laughs> simple as that um, so yeah but even uh, when it's cold there is still a flow of oil going around your cooler which means that sometimes in winter you can actually overcool your oil by having maybe too cold a cooler um, and basically all that air goes through and cools it but uh, having a thermostatic sandwich plate is a really good idea and it just basically dampens that a little bit uh, but yeah so let's get this fitted now uh, we need to put the half inch BSP fittings in the end uh, and then we just need to bolt it up into the car we'll get the fittings attached we'll get the hose cut uh, and we'll get it hosed up and oh, we'll nearly be done So all the fittings in the kit are half inch BSP and it's just push on hose. Now if you try and push these on when the hose is cold, um, well, you probably won't be able to do it to be honest. Um, it's an absolute nightmare. But all you've got to do is uh, dip them in some hot boiling water uh, and then the, the end of the hose is soft enough and you should be able to push it on. And when it's on, when it cools, it contracts a little bit and then that is a completely oil tight uh, fitting. So we've had this in hot water for about three or four minutes. You see it's steamy. Let's try about getting these on there. That is <laughs> freaking hell. Oh, but that's what we're done now. That fitting's on there, and that will not come off now, and it'll certainly not leak oil either. But oh, probably do a pushing it on like another millimeter actually. Right, so that's the pipes there now fitted nicely, and they come over here and through this little window here that I've chopped in the slam panel. Now I'm probably just going to cover these with some silicon pipe here just so they don't rub on the sides but then they'll come nicely along here and connect up. So I'll get them measured now and we'll get these pipes finalised. Also a good idea to put some grease around these threads because these oil coolers are made of aluminium and the fittings are made of stainless steel and you don't want you know any horrible galvanic corrosion between them because all that will happen is they'll rot and fall off. Um, so yeah I put some grease around the threads. It's going to be a right pain in the arse to fit because now I've primed it full of oil. Um, I am mounting this upside down so it's going to be a case of like when I get the pipes on and we'll see.
So that's how cool I finished now. Brackets are all painted, bolted up. Uh, the unions are bolted up as well, nice and uh, tight. You don't go too tight, it actually tells you on the top. I think it's about 30 newton meters, something like that, anyway. But yeah, you don't go too tight with these. Just give them a nice little nip uh, and make sure that you hold on to the actual oil cooler itself so these don't twist away. But yeah, really easy to do that. Uh, I've added some pipe clips, this one on the front of the rod support. Uh, and I've also added this silicon that I've just wrapped around the pipes as it goes through. It's pretty loose like. So I'm not really scared of having the chafe there, but you never know it. So I just thought it would be a good idea to put that in. And then I've got another pipe clip here where the pipes come to keep it nice and tight to the slam panel. And then go down to the sandwich plate down the bottom. So oil cooler installs finished. Uh, now I just need to put the car back together. So inlet manifold, put oil in, put coolant in, air filter, cross brace, intercooler, bumper bar, blah, 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 blah. Let's get on with it. So the oil's in now, so the last little thing to do is just to crank the engine over without firing it. And the reason I do that is just to make sure that the oil pump gets oil all the way around the engine, but also all the way around the cooler. So we'll crank it over and the oil pump will be going and it'll push oil all the way around. And when it actually, you know, fills up the cooler and the rest of the engine, that's when the oil pressure will go up on the gauge and I'll be able to see that on the inside of the car. Uh, and then basically I'll, I'll know that there's good oil pressure. I'll then come, I'll check the level again, because the level will definitely have went down, you know, once it fills up them pipes and what have you. Um, and then we're good to fire it up, so I've got the coil relay out, I've got the injectors disconnected, so let's get it cranked over. Right, let's turn this puppy over. There we go, there's the oil pressure going up now. You've seen that the oil pressure gauge started going up there and the oil pressure sender is on top of the filter housing. So that basically means that um, everything uh, post that, so you know, the, the oil cooler, uh, the filter, the engine, if it's seeing pressure there, then it's because it's filled up all of the little oil galleries and the crevices and the pipes and the cooler and all the rest of it. So now I'm really happy that there's oil all the way around the, the complete uh, lubricating system. Uh, and then there's just one last thing to do is I'll check the level and I'll probably have to top that up because it would have pumped oil into places that will now be full permanently. You know, like the pipes and the cooler, they stay full, they don't drain out. So yeah, we'll get there, we'll get that level checked and then we'll be done. So that's it, VAG 18T oil cooler installation. But this this one's obviously been on my Lupo. Uh, but it's the same, honestly, if you've got a Golf, if you've got a Clio, anything, anything with the 18T engine, that's gonna, that's pretty much, you know, ish, how you're gonna do it. And if you've done it any different, let us know in the comments. I really would appreciate it. I'd like to hear about it. If you think it's crap, let us know about it. If you think it's good, let us know about it. Give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. And who knows? The next one, Decimal Spence might be back. How awesome does that look? <laughs> I don't even think I want the pumper on. <laughs>